Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday evening update on this Sunday, January 25th. The place to get all your news and views about life extension from around the world. Chat with top researchers and advocates, yeah, from all over the world, as I mentioned. Uh, this program is brought to you by the Immortality Institute. I'm your host, Justin Lowe. It's also the greenest, most environmentally friendly broadcast on Ustream with a studio lit exclusively by LED lighting. Yes, and our guest tonight is Dr. Josh Middledorf. I would classify him, I guess, currently as an evolutionary biologist, although he has done many things in the past. And he has some great discussion here tonight for us about the programmed theory of aging versus the damage theory of aging, something I know that is debated often amongst many of you. And also, uh, he has quite a few ideas on health and nutrition, uh, and including an opinion on HGH. And that will supplant our normal snake oil segment. You know, typically we take a little look at some of the things out there, some of these great anti-aging therapies and supplements and this and that and treatments uh, out there in the world of anti-aging and longevity and try and deduce what's real, what's not. And tonight maybe we can get a little uh, point of reference on HGH from uh, Dr. Middledorf. So, with that said, he will be our guest tonight. But first, I have a couple of updates for you. Let me go to the graphics. And the first one is the $8,000 matching grant that the Institute did approve. And boy, this thing is rolling along. I mean, it is hot. We do have a lot of donations already in. Um, we started out uh, on Saturday. Well, start out last week, and by Saturday we had $1,090 collected, and already today, this morning, it was up to $2,200, and Shannon, your illustrious chairperson of the Institute, informs me that a few more have come in yet today, and I want to let you know, after the show, we're going to have a little fun, uh, after the show is done, after the recording is done, I'll stay live, I mentioned in the forums that I'll be donating my old uh, ancient coin collection to this matching grant for William O. Wrights, uh, who is suffering from a terminal case of cancer, and we're hoping to and, uh, get enough money for a cryopreservation for him. He's always been a big supporter, and he's been battling cancer uh, for the last few months, outlived every prediction, uh, but time is short. So I'm going to be counting coins <laughs> after the show, so that might be, yeah, might be pretty fun. Who knows? Maybe it'll be boring. I've got a, maybe a couple hundred dollars worth of old coins that I'll take a look at, and I'm going to donate toward the cause. Another thing that you know is going on, the director elections. This time of year, we have a month-long election process. You can go to, well, let's see, let me get up the uh, graphic here. I've got one here. Well, we do have a director voting thread at the Immortality Institute. Uh, let me, here, let's take a look at this one here, this graphic. Okay, see on the front page, uh, we've got this uh, link in the announcement section to the director elections. It says vote here. Of course, that is for members. Uh, members who support the Institute are like shareholders of the Institute, and by constitution, they are the voters who install in, install the directors, the board of directors. But you can participate in the election as well. You notice under the main forums, we have the 2009 board elections. Let me highlight it there. You go to the main forum page, click on that link, and you can see all of the candidates. They each have a separate thread that they espouse their positions in, and you can ask questions of them, uh, voice your support, anyone, not just members, but anyone can uh, uh, take part in the process. So uh, check that out. We've got seven people uh, looking to fill four different board seats, and the election ends on February 8th. So there you go, the updates for tonight. Now I want to get into our interview, since I know that's what so many of you are here for, to hear Dr. Josh Middledorf. Uh, I want to uh, welcome Josh to the show at this point. Well, thank you, Justin. Yes, well, welcome here, and you know what? I want to jump right into it. The main point that uh, everyone's been waiting to hear about, and that is the program theory of aging versus the damage theory of aging. Now, obviously, Aubrey de Grey has gotten a lot of 
attention and headlines over the last four or five years regarding the damage theory of aging and his thens, uh, SENS therapies, uh, his proposed therapies to combat aging. Uh, but, you know, there certainly has been uh, quite a bit of the program theory of aging out there and some people have accused uh, some of us uh, that are watching the show tonight or uh, are at, hang out at the Institute of uh, being too many uh, disciples of the damage theory of aging but really you, you're very welcome to hear uh, alternative theories and we're always very open-minded about that and I want to ask you right off the bat here uh, Dr. Middledorf what is the let's say prima facie evidence for the program theory of aging, uh, the evolved genetic theory of aging, I guess you could call it as well. Uh, I'll let you take it from there, and, and you can take your time. I know it's, it's kind of a complicated answer, uh, but I just want to kind of get to the heart of it. What in your mind, uh, perhaps what research you've seen recently, or uh, if you can explain the program theory of aging and why you are, say, a proponent of that, to a greater extent than the damage theory of aging. Well, um, this this is my work, so we can talk about it as much as you like. I'm <laughs> going to give you five points. Five points. Okay. Summer uh, a summary, and we'll go back and uh, and go into depth in each of them as as you like or as your listeners like. Sure. Let's let's do but the summary. I'll first. start with what what got me hooked on this field, it was about 12 years ago when I first learned about caloric restriction. Um, aging is avoidable. Not only can the body avoid aging and slow down the, the rate of aging, but does so not when it's got the most resources, but when it's most stress. Most, mm. Many kinds of stress lead to a slowing of the aging process. The most famous is starvation. Right. And that means to me that when the body is not stressed, then there must be some, aging must be deliberate. It must be chosen by the body. That's point one. Okay. The second is that there are genes that are discovered. I mean, long after the uh, damage theory of aging and the pleiotropy theory of aging came out, there's uh, the science of genetics. And we now can identify the genes that regulate aging at a very high level. Single genes that can double the lifespan, and in some cases uh, quintuple the, the lifespan in these uh, small organisms, and other genes that drastically reduce the lifespan. Single genes. Okay. Nobody predicted that. And if, that, if that's true, it, I mean, why hasn't nature, if nature wanted to get rid of these genes that are really aging genes, uh, she, she would have done so. And another hint in there is that these genes seem to be related. The high-level gene, for example, CROC1 is in the news just last week. CROC1 is a gene discovered in worms that regulates aging. And amazingly, there's an analogous gene in mammals that does the same damn thing. Hmm. Uh, any gene that's been preserved like that, presumably since the uh, dawn of eukaryotic life 500 million years ago, every gene that's pre preserved like that has a function. It's there for a reason. It's not an accident. It's not damage. That's point two. Point three, all of the theories of dating, the evolutionary theories of dating, are based on the idea that, well, Aging doesn't cost much in the wild. It doesn't really lower your fitness very much. And this was a theoretical idea that came out. Uh, it was due to Medawar in 1952, the, the book that really started the current uh, thinking about aging in the evolutionary field was written by Medawar in 1952. And at the time, no experiments had been done, but he, he speculated that Aging doesn't cost very much in the wild because most animals die before they get to the age at which right. aging uh, 